Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us for this Friday show. Yesterday's satellite imagery uh, showed uh, a lot of cloudiness here from off the chart there, sweeping northeastward uh, into the southeast part of the state. The whole pattern shifting eastward, spreading clouds in across the southeast coast. Something of a break here, at least the clouds thin or not much clearing, and then uh, some more higher top clouds back through here, the uh, system out there west of the Pribilofs. That uh, gradually moving eastward throughout the day yesterday. Otherwise, uh, really not a lot of breaks around except for northeast Bristol Bay and that slipping into southern Cook Inlet yesterday, which uh, spread northward overnight last night, led to the low clouds and fog. Early today was uh, pretty socked in over the Sitna Valley southward into Cook Inlet. That burned off quite nicely this afternoon to mostly sunny skies and uh, offshore flow here. Northerly winds 15 to 25 miles an hour along the North Gulf Coast there. Warm temperatures up pretty nice this afternoon. We've had a front today slipping southward and uh, exiting the panhandle late this afternoon and some clearing behind it. Showers ending and uh, temperatures responded by rising to the 60s and lower 70s across that part of the state. Also some pretty good breaks up here over the northwest. Still some clouds and showers right through here, scattered showers, and then uh, kind of a system developed and sneaked up into Bristol Bay early today and moved eastward across Kodiak Island. Not a lot of rainfall with that. Uh, right in that position there, and then it's uh, scooting off to the east and it'll dive off to the southeast here later on tonight and into tomorrow. But uh, rainfall amounts less than a tenth of an inch with that, clearing out really nice behind it. Uh, Bristol Bay, especially the Alaska Peninsula, down across to Unalaska Island there with temperatures in the 60s this afternoon. And then that system out here spread eastward enough or pushed eastward enough to spread some rain into the Pribilof Islands this afternoon with uh, St. Paul picking up uh, about uh, 15 hundredths of an inch of rain during the day today with that system, clearing back to the northwest here, spreading the St. Lawrence Island, uh, getting in some sunshine there. And uh, on the chart today, there's that front coming southward there with the uh, lingering showers, even ended down over the southern areas with some uh, sunshine this afternoon, but uh, kind of a partly sunny day back to the north after the showers and uh, areas of rain this morning. Clear skies out across the Gulf of Alaska up into the North Gulf Coast, uh, Copper River Basin, South Central Alaska, and the rain down here with that very weak system, high pressure back along the southwest coast, kind of over the top flow, sending that moisture eastward into the interior there with some uh, drizzle, fog, IFR type stuff there from the southern Seward Peninsula coast. Areas of fog, mostly on the south side of St. Lawrence Island, but that uh, clearing out this afternoon. This trough right on top of the Pribilof Islands, the main low center back to the west. And uh, showers here, upper level trough kind of dropping southeastward, or it is dropping southeastward, but it's pretty weak, but enough to keep the showers going. A couple isolated lightning strikes up there over the far northeast interior there around the Brooks Range. High pressure in the Arctic coast, wind's not too bad there. Pretty nice conditions with the exception of Kaktovik that had some rain and fog most of the day the lower visibility is conditions much nicer back to the west and way out west there should be a quarter mile in fog uh, ceiling 100 feet so definitely low IFR out in that area 
And you might add a little bit of light rain or drizzle to that pattern tonight as that weak trough edges its way eastward across that area. This thing uh, mostly out uh, in the middle of the Bering Sea, not doing much, uh, just a risk of some moisture there at Atka. Otherwise, uh, may see some rain sneak on up and uh, catch the eastern illusions there late tonight as that wind flow becomes southeasterly and pulls that trough back to the northwest there while this system drops off to the southeast out of the picture now high pressure holds over the southwest coast at the surface about 1030 millibars here through this area and the trough acts as gulf of alaska so that's going to keep the offshore flow going so uh, mostly clear kodiak island up across the north gulf coast and uh, Clear skies or partly cloudy skies are variably cloudy here for the panhandle. So a risk of some showers down to the south, but uh, just a slight chance at that. Showers diminishing along the Alaska range, the shower activity here over the west central interior. That ending with uh, clearing skies, uh, still some lingering showers possible up over the northeast, back to the west here, but nothing significant. We're going to hold on to those gusty winds. Uh, today, again, uh, about like yesterday, uh, 15 to 25 miles per hour, Point uh, Hope had gusts about 25, while Cape Lisburn seeing gusts up to about 40 again today. That's kind of the perfect setup here to keep those winds on the western Arctic coast there from roughly about Point Lay on down, especially Cape Lisburn with a deep Arctic storm back there along the Russian Far East coast, kind of moving northeastward there. And we'll see uh, tonight, the front begins to approach or for tomorrow, front begins to approach the western Arctic coast there. So we've got small craft advisories from uh, really the Bering Strait northward uh, along the west side there, even coming up to 20 knots on the central coast. Lighter winds off to the east. Uh, upper trough kind of uh, lingering in this area, so that keeps cooler air aloft, and that should result in some afternoon thunderstorm activity just scattered or isolated from the eastern Alaska range northward uh, to maybe Eagle. Upper Tanah Valley, 40 mile country in that uh, type of area, otherwise mostly sunny. Another north to northwest wind flow day coming up with uh, Kodiak Island sunshine, Bristol Bay, same forecast, a lot of sunshine here over the southwest interior. South central Alaska, north Gulf Coast again, a day much like today there, uh, just a few clouds over the Copper River Basin areas and uh, lingering low pressure there over the southern panhandle or around Dixon entrance. I'll keep a few clouds down in that other area, otherwise partly to mostly sunny at some point in the day tomorrow here for the remainder of the panhandle. And another trough comes up and sort of smack, well, it's a weak trough. That could bring a chance of rain from Atka back across the eastern Aleutians to the extreme western Alaska Peninsula. Otherwise, a pretty fair day tomorrow again, Bristol Bay. Areas of fog right along the coast all the way up to the Bering Strait. Uh, lingering area moisture staying out to the west there. And uh, just IFR kind of weather out over the western and central Aleutian areas. And then the forecast for Sunday, this uh, front weakens and drops southeastward to about a position like this Sunday afternoon at uh, 3 p.m. Barrow, uh, good chance of some light rain. That's really a narrow band of precipitation there with that of uh, and that'll extend back through the Bering Strait across Kivalina, Shishmaref, Tin City, on down to Savunga, Gamble. Really breaks up through here, so I wouldn't look for a lot of precipitation at all, just uh, some cloudiness and wind still light out here over much of the Bering Sea and a little gusty here. A couple of days with small craft advisories in the forecast for the Barren Islands tomorrow for Kamishak Bay and uh, that kind of lingers into Sunday as well. I uh, look for uh, an upper disturbance now comes southeastward out of Canada and uh, brings a chance of showers there in over the eastern Tanana Valley areas and that drops southward across the mountains and by Sunday afternoon you could be looking at a mostly cloudy day with uh, or mostly cloudy afternoon with scattered thunderstorms across the Copper River Basin on into the Yukon and then some moisture sliding northward here uh, begins to approach and affect the southern panhandle Saturday night and uh, during the day on Sunday that spreads northward. So uh, wind swinging around to the southeast here over the southern inside water areas with uh, showers advancing northward throughout the day. Probably won't make it up to uh, Juneau, Haines or Skagway, maybe even Elfin Cove, uh, but uh, better chance down to the south. North Gulf Coast, uh, partly to mostly sunny and uh, 
relatively mild, maybe a few more clouds showing up there. Same thing for the Sitna Valley, could see a few more clouds spilling in, but should be a dry day, rain free. Definitely the Kenai Peninsula, Sunshine, Kodiak Island, same forecast here with the southwest interior. And not bad up over the Tanana Valley, northward to the Eastern Brooks Range. Even the north slope there, kind of as this front tends to advance to the east, although it's pretty weak. Uh, offshore flow should kick in a little bit there to help clear it out or at least make for a VFR type of day up there with maybe a little bit of sunshine. So I'll have our trough right through here, keeping the chances of uh, lower flying conditions with a little bit of drizzle and light rain. Definitely fog here, Western Alaska Peninsula to Unalaska, a break for Atka and Adak, and then about the same type of weather out over the Western Bering. Temperatures across the southeast coast this afternoon with the uh, clearing skies and net pushed up to 72, 63 over at Heidelberg, Sitka at 61, and uh, up at Haines, 70 degrees, while Juneau was stuck at 50 or 63. Elfin Cove had 55. Yakutat, 64, 77 there at Cordova, 79 at Valdez. Again, those uh, northerly winds, offshore winds, helping push those temperatures up. There is at least 70 degrees today at Seward with north winds gusting to 25. 60s across the Copper River Basin with uh, McCarthy at 67, 66 up at Northway. Gunsight there at 63. Nice mid to, or lower to mid 70s through the Susitna Valley today, but at mid-afternoon, Talkeetna was 71. Big Lake had 72. Uh, 60s across Anchorage where it took longer for those clouds to clear out. Temperatures kind of lagging, 60 at Kenai, but uh, 70 over here at Iliamna and uh, 66 degrees there at Sleep Mute with 63 in McGrath. Up to the north, Fairbanks had 67, but Tannen only 61. Fort Yukon uh, up to 63, but there are a lot of 70s showing up around this area like uh, Chuck Yitzik was in the lower 70s as well as some other locations up here in the late afternoon. But uh, Bettles, early morning rain shower, 59 this afternoon, 61 in Antuvik, same thing at Umiat Airfield, and uh, upper 40s to lower to mid 50s along the Arctic coast, and 50s to mid 60s here over the inland areas of the uh, uh, Seward Peninsula, with uh, 64 though at Buckland, or actually that's Daring with 64, Kotzebue at 58, 50 degrees at Savunga, Nome 53. Bethel 60, same temperature at St. Mary's, 50s out along the coast. Lower 50s through the Perbloffs this afternoon, 50s here, Adak westward to Shimya, and then into the 60s here for the eastern Aleutians, all the way up into northeast Bristol Bay. Lows for tonight, look for uh, 50s across the Panhandle, some areas dropping to the upper 40s. Uh, upper 40s to lower 50s across uh, all of southern Alaska, a little more 40s showing up here north of the Alaska Range, especially back to the northwest and of course north of the Brooks Range, but uh, relatively mild, all staying above the 40 degree mark, 50s to upper 40s out to the west and southwest. Highs for tomorrow, uh, 60s to 70s again over the upper Yukon Valley areas, definitely here Bristol Bay, Susitna Valley, areas along the coast, and uh, Look at the 70s showing up now over the central and northern panhandle, uh, lower to mid with uh, temperatures near 70 or above even over the southern areas. And moving on to the flying weather, tomorrow morning, uh, some marginal VFR there along the north side of the central and eastern Alaska range, lingering marginal VFR over the southern southeast coast. Otherwise, pretty good conditions here uh, through the interior with the lower stuff here, southwest flow. Uh, getting enhanced to IFR there along the southern slopes of the Western Brooks Range, Shishmaref or uh, Tin City, and Wales down along the south coast of the Seward Peninsula. Kind of hit and miss here over the southeast Bering Sea. And then uh, IFR increases, of course, as you go out to the west. Then for tomorrow afternoon, not much change. We've got VFR though from Norton Sound all along the southwest coast, Bristol Bay, the Alaska Peninsula. All VFR over the central and eastern interior from the Arctic coast southward to the Gulf of Alaska and across the Panhandle. Uh, again, a couple of thunderstorms could develop here over the eastern interior areas, but nothing really significant. And then for passes, Anatovic VFR tomorrow, same forecast for Adigan. And Lake Clark and Merrill VFR probably both tomorrow and Sunday. Rainy Sunday or VFR through the weekend. Windy, same forecast. Isabel VFR. 
and Mentasta VFR. Even Sunday with the increasing clouds and showers, they should be of the VFR variety. And for Tanita, two days of VFR flying, as well as Portage, good through the weekend, and Chilkoot and White uh, VFR. For the freezing levels, a few more lines on the chart today. We've got uh, 4,000 feet uh, there by the Great Slave Lake southeastward, sloping up to about 10,000 feet there toward Bristol Bay. 14,000 feet here up along the northwest coast from the Bering Strait to uh, just about Point Lay, quite high for that uh, far north there. And then a cold pool with an upper low there out over the Bering Sea. And no icing in the forecast again tomorrow. So moving on to the jet stream, big ridge here up over the northwest interior. Northerly winds 100 knots down onto the eastern Arctic coast, southward northwest 70 from Kodiak Island, and a uh, big trough out over the Bering Sea. Northwest, north to northwest, 20 to 25 knots. Southern Alaska, lighter to the north. Light northerlies, maybe 15 to 20 for the Panhandle. Really light winds out here over the Bering Sea from varying directions. And that same pattern at 3,000 feet here. Strongest winds will be from the uh, Alaska Range southward, uh, Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak Island, 25 to 30 knots. Much lighter to the east, much lighter north of the Alaska Range. Light winds under this ridge axis along the west coast. Southeast release, 10 to 20 on the west side of that feature. And uh, also up here, those gusty winds on the western Arctic coast. Uh, look for occasional moderate chop there. Point Lay back down to Cape Lisburn and Point Hope. Mostly below about 4,000 feet. Mechanical turbulence, Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula down to Kodiak Island, including Kamishak Bay, maybe over the northern southeast coast. After hangar flying, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Harry Keeling, and on behalf of the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and Alaska Public Media, welcome to Hangar, hangar Flying. Our guest this evening is Ryan Gould. Ryan was on last time. He's an air traffic control supervisor at Merrill. Um, before that, he was at Anchorage Tower. And um, when he was on the program last time, we were talking about Part 93, explaining exactly what it was, and also dispelling the rumor that the FAA is not going to, uh, or the tower, or the towers are, are not going to approve any more deviations to Part 93. What we ended up understanding is this. If you want a Part 93 deviation, ask for it. If the tower can give it to you, they will. If they can't, they'll probably discuss options. But you don't, don't necessarily expect you're going to get it every time. And you've got to have it approved before you do what you want to do. Tonight, I want to talk about CAR-T airspace. Welcome back, Ryan. Talk Thank about you. what what is CAR T airspace. Uh, CAR T airspace is another special airspace that we reserve for Elmendorf traffic. Again, um, that coming into land runway um, three four at Elmendorf. It, since our airspace is so close, we section off a bit of airspace so that the aircraft can descend and land into Elmendorf. Um, the airspace itself is basically almost all the way from the east border of Merrill's airspace until just east of Bragal Street. And it extends from the northernmost part of Merrill's airspace down to uh, just south of 15th Street. So that does get a bit confusing for guys that are unfamiliar. Um, so what happens is we have a guy coming into Elmendorf. We activate our CAR-T airspace. At that point in time, we clear out any aircraft that are in that airspace and we turn other aircraft to avoid it. So basically what a pilot can expect coming in from the northwest is to um, keep their base inside or west of Bagal or to, uh, if they're coming in from the east, to enter our airspace south of Northern Lights. And that will always be uh, indicated or dictated by a controller They'll let the pilot know the airspace is hot and how to enter our airspace to avoid it. Okay, good. Thank you for that explanation. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you that having flown some flight reviews with folks recently, there's a lot of you that don't even know that CAR-T airspace exists. It is in the supplement. There is a diagram in the supplement that you should look up and review 
but Ryan has explained to you what's going to happen. If CAR T airspace is in effect, you need to be aware. You need to be aware of that area and avoid it. So, one, so let me ask you this, Ryan. Uh, someone unfamiliar with the procedure, coming in from Canada, coming in from the east, calls in, checks in. And he and you say CAR T airspace is in effect. And he says, "Can you tell me what to do? I'm, I have no idea. I have no clues." Yeah, we get that frequently, even now, because a lot of local pilots are still are not familiar with the CAR T. Um, by the way, the CAR T will be active um, much more frequent than normal up until October second. Uh, Elmendorf is doing runway construction. And so um, that's going to, on runway six at Elmendorf, so that's going to be closed for a while. And all their aircraft are going to be coming through our airspace to land runway three, four. So up until October 2nd, we will have more increased activity for the CAR-T. So let me ask a question. I should know this, but do you have like a bright scope in the tower, a, a radar of, so you can see where these, can you skin paint these folks or? Some. Some. It, it, that's a complicated question. Um, Tell you what, let me answer the first question right. and then I'll get back to that one. So for guys that are unfamiliar in our airspace, what we'll do is we'll um, probably tell them to come around the Tudor Muldoon curve. It's oh, a very yeah. pronounced yep. landmark. Everybody can see it. It's, um, it's very big. And uh, once we get them in sight, we'll tell them to enter that airspace and then we can kind of coach them via headings or landmarks at that point into the runway. Good. Okay. Um, and then secondly, uh, your other question was regarding... Um, I'm, I was just curious whether or not you could help this poor soul that's coming in from Canada that has no no clue. Oh, definitely. Yeah. We work with every pilot individually. So, I mean, you could actually tell him, hey, listen, you need to turn head south at this point and, and you know, talking, basically talking through it. Exactly. Okay, you probably do that a lot, don't you? Every day. <laughs> every day. And so I was coming in the other day and from the west and you said, keep your base inside. Costco. Is that pretty hard for folks to do? or? No, nope. Costco is a very visible landmark out there. It's a big white building. You can't miss it. And uh, once we say that, usually we get the aha moment from the pilots. <laughs> that guy, okay. Ryan, thanks for being on the program. And thanks for talking about Part 93 and ta talking about CAR-T airspace. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed tonight's program. Uh, my recommendation is this. Get your supplement out. Look at Part 93. Make sure that you know the departures and arrival procedures for the runway that you're operating on because this is not optional. If you're, if you're flying out of one of those busy airports, you need to comply with the procedures. And we talked about Part 93. We talked about CAR-T airspace. Please review that too if you're operating on a Merrill field. Until next time, fly safe. Well, the coast is clear as far as sea ice goes here all across the area. And this batch up through here uh, with the south-southwest winds or southerly winds coming in, this whole area should uh, push off to the north over the next uh, couple of days as long as the winds stay in that direction. Otherwise, for the uh, panhandle north to northwest here, strongest in northern Lynn Canal, there's a small craft advisory out tomorrow. Northeast 15 on the north coast, uh, north to northwest at the same speed down to the south. For Sunday, uh, winds switch direction there, kind of a trough coming up from the south. Southeast 15 for Clarence Strait. Otherwise, uh, these winds here from the north becoming uh, lighter in the afternoon with uh, 20 knots in the morning for northern Lynn Canal. Southeast 15 here for the coast with five foot seas. And Prince William Sound variable to northwest at 15 tomorrow. Higher gusts out of the northern bays, uh, about 25 knots. Same thing here for the North Gulf Coast. Stronger gusts out of the Copper River Delta. Otherwise just 10 knots for the uh, coastal areas here. And northwest 20 to 30 from Kamishak Bay, south westward or south across the Barren Islands, Kodiak Island, westerlies 15 to 20, and about that same uh, pattern for Sunday as well. The winds come down a little bit here, still 20 to 25 knots, small craft advisories for the Barren Islands, but pretty light and variable everywhere else. For Bristol Bay, northwest 10, increasing to 20 knots here, Sitkanak to Castle Cape, otherwise uh, light and variable here at 10 knots or less for the Alaska Peninsula. 
and uh, about the same pattern here, a little more westerly on the Pacific side there, and then northwest at 20 on up towards Sitkanak, light winds for Bristol Bay. For the Aleutian, southeasterly tomorrow at uh, 10 to 20 here for the eastern zones, light and variable uh, to northeast 10 to 20 here for the Adak and Atka area, and even lighter out to the west. And then for Sunday easterlies, 10 to 15 here, west of Adak out to Shimia, southeast 15 for the central Aleutians, and then turning southerly, kind of some ridging over the eastern Aleutians, so winds pretty light uh, for the day there with three to six foot seas. Southwest coast, uh, light winds at about 10 knots here, south 15 for St. Lawrence Island, into the northern Bering Sea, southeast 10 for the Perbolofs. And for Sunday, uh, southeast 15 for the Perbolofs, northerlies 10 to 15 along the southwest coast, up to St. Lawrence Island, northeast at 10 for St. Matthew Island. And for the Arctic coast, south to southeast, 10 to 15 on the east side, those winds picking up here, 30 knots out of the south tomorrow, all the way down uh, to uh, the Bering Strait there with uh, small craft advisories, seas running 68 feet. Then those uh, change direction as higher pressure builds in out to the west. Northerlies at 20 here on the west side, turning northwest, and then getting a little squirrely here, swinging around to the east there on the eastern Arctic coast at about 20 knots. For tonight, uh, fair lingering showers this evening, really tapering off by tomorrow morning, and uh, some lingering down there through the evening, possibly nothing really heavy at all for the southern southeast coast and gusty winds continue on the western Arctic coast. For tomorrow, lots of sunshine again, 60s, 70s. Some areas could push 80 again in some locations. Thunderstorm activity possible over the upper Tanana Valley. And then uh, for Sunday, some showers move in across the Panhandle. Another nice day over the interior, a weak trough or weak front up to the northwest with some light rain and fog. That's a look at the weather for this Friday evening. Thanks for joining us and I'll see you again tomorrow. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Alaska Pipeline Service Company, sustaining Alaska's pipeline and its operations today and into the future.